it's Lon Sybin, and if you were a video gamer in the 1980s, you either had one of these or knew someone who did. It's the ColecoVision, a truly remarkable kind of a next generation console for its day. It was like going from uh, the Super Nintendo to the PlayStation. It was a big jump uh, in technology at the time. So a uh, really remarkable home console. And now there is a replica from AT Games. This is called the ColecoVision Flashback. And it's a pretty much a self-contained unit. There's no cartridge slot or anything like that. But uh, it's got 60 games built in. Uh, it's got a number of A-list titles from back in the original ColecoVision days. It's got a bunch of Epics games like uh, Jumpman Jr. and, and uh, Pit Stop and a few others. It also has a bunch of games from Sega and Coleco as well. So it's got a pretty good library built in. I'll put the list uh, in the video description below. It also has some homebrew games that some independent developers have been making. There's still a lot of people developing games still uh, for the ColecoVision, which is pretty cool to see. So uh, they tried to kind of replicate the industrial design. It's really just a lot of empty space in here. The circuit board is only running uh, kind of in the front here. The rest of this is just a uh, open space. So it's a very lightweight, kind of flimsy feeling console. Um, you connect it to your TV, unfortunately, with a composite cable. It's not uh, it doesn't have any HDMI or any kind of HD uh, up, uh, upscaling or anything built in. So you're basically plugging it in uh, the same way you plugged your Nintendo and your Sega and all the other stuff you had on the 80s and 90s into your television set. It's just a standard RCA analog cable. So if you have an older television or one that doesn't have a very good scaler, you might get uh, some, uh, some little delays in uh, controller response. And speaking of controllers, they tried to also replicate the look of the original Coleco controller. It's nowhere near as good. It feels very flimsy. Um, you know, it has the same kind of style, but the original controller was a bit larger, a lot sturdier. We used to throw these things at each other when we were kids sometimes. Uh, so these things really held up a lot better. And this one didn't, you know, had a, a nice range of motion, uh, so it was more of an analog stick. This one has like eight points that you can move it to. So if you're trying to move diagonally, you have to kind of lock it into, into its position. Uh, it really doesn't feel all that uh, close to the original at all. And again, it's really uh, kind of flimsy there. Uh, surprisingly, it has the same connector style as the original controller, but although you can plug the original controller into here, it doesn't actually work, which is a disappointment. Another disappointment is that you cannot use your own ROMs. If you happen to have like a you know, SD card with some ColecoVision games on it, uh, you can't put them on here. The only games you can play are the ones that are burned right into the circuit board. I took it apart to see if perhaps there was maybe an SD card under there, but nope, it is uh, completely sealed off. So it'll only play the 60 games that it came with. So you're not going to be able to get Donkey Kong and some of the other ports that they uh, couldn't get the, li the rights to. So uh, that is unfortunate. So if you like the 60 games it comes with, you'll, you'll do okay. But otherwise, you will not be too happy with it. All right, we're going to hit the power button right now to power it up. It just takes it a second for uh, the menu to come up on the screen. And then you take the controller out and just kind of navigate uh, through its menu of available games. I'm going to load up Bump and Jump, which was one of my favorites from when I was a kid. And we'll let this go through here. You got to wait, uh, just like you did on the original, there was a uh, wait time for the licensing screen to come up. So you had to sit through this for a second and then uh, you would be presented with some options. And one of the things that was unique about the ColecoVision is that it had this number pad for uh, selecting the kind of game you wanted to play. Uh, this game in particular worked with their driving expansion. They actually had a really good driving wheel that uh, was an expansion kit that worked with the original. So we, of course, don't have that. So we'll hit uh, one for standard controller here. And then we'll do uh, one. Now, before I turn on the game, I'm going to turn the sound on because I want you to hear the sound. And um, now, many of you may not have played these games back when you were kids, but this sound is not what it's supposed to sound like. So uh, I'm going to take a quick little break from uh, the action here so you can hear uh, what the original was supposed to sound like. This is also another game where uh, the controller issues really come into play because you really have to keep everything in a diagonal position to play this game. You have to push up to accelerate the car and then kind of move left and right in order to steer it. And uh, this, this controller just doesn't feel right. I've been playing this game now for 30 years, so <laughs> I'm, I'm used to it. And it just this controller just isn't uh, replicating the original for me, unfortunately. They took a lot of effort to make this look like this, but they really didn't uh, go all the way by making it sound like the original, uh, nor does it really control and play like the original. It would have been great if you could have plugged these original controllers in uh, to the console and used them because a lot of us still have them kicking around, uh, but that was not the case. All right, I'm going to hit the reset button now and take a look at some of the other games that are on here. One of the ones that I was surprised to see uh, was Minor 2049er, which is going to look like a really cheesy game uh, on the surface, but it really was a fun game that 
uh, had a lot, of, uh, a lot of depth to it. It had a lot of levels available. And this is kind of like a, a mix of like Pac-Man and maybe like Jumpman Jr. and a few others where you had like these platforms that you had to uh, basically climb up on and then turn the little stripe to a solid color while not getting eaten by the little ghost guys here. And it was really challenging, uh, but a lot of fun. So this was another one that uh, I liked to play a lot as a kid. And another one, again, that doesn't really control all that great because of the, uh, the really lousy controllers that came with the console. Now, one last game I wanted to show you is Zaxxon, which was a popular Sega game from back in the day. Uh, this is another example of how the sound is really going to disappoint you if you were a, a big-time Coleco player back in the day. So let me wait for this to uh, get past its screen here, and we will go ahead and start the game real quick. And I have the sound up right now so you can get a feel for uh, how this is sounding. And this, it's just not doing it for me, if you can hear it. It just uh, it sounds horrible. It didn't sound all that great on the original either, but... It sounds a lot worse now, and I'll let you uh, listen to what the original sounded like now. So that is the ColecoVision flashback, and although they made such an effort to replicate the look and feel of the original, they really fell short because they didn't spend the same amount of effort to make the games actually play like the originals did, or even sound like the originals did. The sound doesn't feel right, the controller doesn't feel right, it's just not a good ColecoVision experience, especially uh, if you played this as much as I did as a kid. So I think if you've got somebody that's looking for a Coleco experience without you know, getting emulators and all the other stuff hooked up on their computer or Android device, uh, then maybe this is something worth considering, but it really just doesn't feel right to me, and it just isn't a good replica, in my opinion, of the original. Uh, the thing that really gets me beyond all the other stuff that I just mentioned is the fact that they have the same connector style as the original controller. They made an effort to really make that kind of a centerpiece of the design, yet when you take the original controller and plug it in, it just doesn't work. It doesn't support the original controllers, which would have actually given it a little bit better playability if they had decided to uh, allow people to do that if they didn't like the controllers that uh, it came with. So, you know, that's what it is. It's certainly uh, a nice looking ColecoVision retro kind of styling, but it's certainly not a real ColecoVision experience. This is Lon Seibman. Thanks for watching.